the cicadas, before uh, we do the stir frying we're going to be doing, we'll need to blanch the cicadas. Essentially, we got water boiling really nicely, and we're going to put them in for three, excuse me, for three minutes. I'll leave the pile of wings over here. Okay. So it's literally just a handful of cicadas. Yep. A handful of cicadas in the water. Timer for three minutes. Uh, can you grab... <laughs> and they go round and round. Yes, and they go round and round. <laughs> okay. I will need a frying pan. For the garlic. Well, for... <laughs> Oops. I did not have our frying pan cabinet set up correctly. We need to get a new cabinet. We do need a new cabinet. Like That's on actual me, racks. <laughs> okay, so those will want to break in half at least. Yeah. So we should also say what's in this. Uh, so it's noodles, uh, garlic, basil, butter, and olive oil, along with the cicadas. We can start. Those. I well, it's for linguine, but we don't have any, so I'm using udon noodles because they're perfectly fine. <laughs> I thought we had linguine, but I was mistaken. I will need just one clove of garlic for this, probably. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go over here and pluck some fresh basil off our lovely basil plant next to the thing. I'm going to mince a clove of garlic really nicely. I am still on stream for that. The, uh, the recipe that we found calls for a lot of basil, like entirely too much basil. We're not going to do that. The, uh, the recipe we found calls for a full cup of fresh basil, which is just a lot. A lot. Instead, I'm just pulling a couple of leaves off of each of these uh, branches on our plant. Do not pull too many off. So I do like that plant. We've had this basil plant for almost two years. Almost two years, huh? Yep. No, this one's just a year. We got this one last year, didn't we? Beginning of last year. Yeah, well, it's been more than a year. It's been more than a year now. Yes, I will want to chop that. I don't know. Twelve. Well, I was just going to test it. In a little <laughs> bit. Package says twelve. Okay. Having a sharp knife definitely helps tremendously. Okay, you got that? Having a sharp knife helps tremendously when you make things like mincing garlic or basil. off my hand. Can you move the butter around for me? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesse. Now, 
We're supposed to add the olive oil, garlic, basil, and cicadas, along with the butter, and saute until the cicadas are slightly brown and crispy, and the basil wilts. Okay. The potatoes are black, so it's going to be hard to tell when they're brown and crispy. I think the brown and crispy is taking into consideration, you're assuming that you were able to get these right when they came out of the ground. And they, they are were more blue at that point. Yes, they are a lighter color. We were not able to get the Fresh, freshly um, emerged ones. ones. So these ones actually have their shell on the outside. Yep. So they went slightly crunchy. The best time to get cicadas is right after they come out of the ground. And they're pretty much immediately after they've left uh, the shell that they spent 17 years in underground uh, before they are able to spend a while forcing air into their system and hardening their shell. So basically, if you find some without their wing, or if you see them without their wings fully unfurled, that's the time to grab them. That's the time to grab them. It also means going out first thing in the morning, because that's when they're doing, that's when they're emerging. And to collect these ones, we had to go about 25 yeah, minutes so. away. Yeah. They did not come out in our backyard like we were hoping. Nope. It was also raining first thing in the morning. Mmm. Smells nice and garlicky. Smells nice and garlicky. We gotta turn down the heat just a little. Don't want to burn the garlic. Don't burn the garlic. I feel like the garlic and the basil is good, but the cicadas need some more time. Okay. So well, that's alright. Basil well, no, what I'm actually going to do is move them to a different frying pan and continue. The little one? Yeah, grab me the little frying pan. Today is a learning experiment, or experience. Okay. And I can give it just a bit of the oil. Using, I can just put this on the, I can just put this over here. Oh, actually, I should take this off of the heat. You should put it in the bowl. I should put it in the bowl. Well, they are sauce that goes over the pasta when yep. the pasta is done. Mm. Smells good. Okay. That smell nice. Yeah, didn't burn it. So just to show, there is the garlic and basil. I think since the directions were until the basil melts, I think they're talking about unchopped basil. I I think that you are correct that I should not have chopped the basil. That would also kind of make sense with how much it called for. Yeah, but that's way too much basil, and we prefer chopped basil. Yeah, eating an entire basil all at once is really not pleasant. Nope. Basil's delicious and all, but still. These need a little bit more oil. There we go. Want some more butter? We got just a little bit more. another leg attached to my shirt. Of course you did. There we go. Whoop. <laughs> A little bit of fire in case you never hurt anyone. <laughs> Don't beat the cicadas! <laughs> That's not, not the goal. Okay, these guys are getting there now. Well, they're supposed to be crispy, right? Yeah. And they're getting towards it. How can you tell? By 
putting a fork against them, and they give more. They have more give. Isn't that the opposite of crispy? They were squishy previously. Now they're oh, now they're firmer. They are firming up. Yeah, okay. or they have less give. Sorry, I think. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's good. I can see. Just a moment more and they'll be done. Cool. These are the ones we're going to actually use. Well, that's okay. We'll put the noodles in there yeah. when we're done. That garlic hit just down a little over done. Okay. So those are good. I can turn the heat off on those. Hope the noodles are good. Yeah. I just don't put the noodles into that bowl. Yeah. Oops. Hot noodles. <laughs> Probably they're toasty. Another minute. Okay. Well, I can put these guys. All of that in there. To try and leave the garlic behind. Because they got overdone. Because they got overdone. But all the cicadas and the oil can go in there. Yeah. Garlic and basil. Okay, I'm gonna call these good then. There's a strainer. Excellent. I'll just fill that. <laughs> I should also take a picture of the finished result. like shrimp and nuts, just like everyone says. Basically. Yeah. Yep. So they, they taste kind of like shrimp and kind of like nuts. Someone also said that they taste kind of like asparagus. Mm. Is yes. that true? That is true. Okay. Station taste, but they've also got uh, an earthy taste, probably from all the time they spent eating trees. They definitely be more pleasant without their shell. What was that? Yeah, there you go. So for all of you out there, if you really, really do want to try this, go look on the ground and try to get the ones without oh, shell. At this point, most of them are already emerged. 
So uh, in 17 years, it's great advice. So I'm <laughs> for Brazil. Still perfectly edible as the adult, like as the hardened ones, so. though. They are hard to actually get on a fork, though. There you go. Mm -hmm. I actually like them better without. Well, that's because you don't like mixing your textures. Yeah, I do. I like them better in a fork bowl. Okay, well, we appreciate you all joining us tonight. And good luck with your cicada hunting. Good luck with your cicada <laughs> hunting. And, you know, we'll be trying a different cicada recipe next week. Mm -hmm. well, see you later.